Hey, hey, good people, how you doing? David Taub here, co-creator of nextlevelguitar.com. Hope all is going well, and I hope your guitar and musical journeys are going famously. And today we have another FAQ session where I answer viewer uh, questions and emails. And this one is, uh, what is it, number six of 2019. So keep those questions coming in. You know, I'm gonna try to get to as many as I can. You can always uh, put your questions in the YouTube uh, a box below or if you feel more comfortable you can always email me your questions and you can email them to me at the next level guitar at yahoo.com and be sure to put question for David in the subject line be sure to stay tuned to the end of this video where we're gonna pick one random winner from the questions in this video and they're gonna get a next level guitar t-shirt or some other next level guitar swag so stick around for that and oh, if you have a second, please subscribe to the channel. Subscribing to the channel is very important. It really helps us to keep the content coming. Leave a comment below, not only if you have a question, but let us know how you like these videos or what lessons you'd like to see coming up or what gear you'd like to see reviewed. Uh, let us know if you like the video, please give it a like, click the thumbs up, and we so appreciate it. And before we get going on your questions, you know, I'm really excited. As you know, um, in some of the previous FAQ videos I mentioned, I have a new original band project. The band is named Mind Cell. And I'm really excited about it because we have a new record that's going to be coming out, our debut record, actually. Um, we have a few songs left to finish up, and um, I'm so excited about it. It's in the hard rock, progressive hard rock genre, and I think the songs are really killer. It's some of the best music I've ever written. I'm really excited to share it with you. And the big news is, in fact, I've released the first song for the coming record. Uh, the song is called Alpha Omega, um, and we actually released it in a video. Um, and if you could do me a huge favor, I'll put a link to that video in the YouTube description box below. If you could just click on it, watch the video, I would love your feedback. You know, let me know what you think of the video, let me know how you like the song, how you like the solo. Um, you'll see some of the techniques I do in the solo, you probably have seen in the lessons, so it's kind of a good musical example, right? But please, if you, can, if you could watch the video and then leave a comment. I'll also put a link below to my uh, Mind Cell Band Facebook page, if you could like that and follow it, I would so appreciate it. You know, I'm going to release some more snippets soon, also of some more original music from the coming CD. And then also, we have the CD coming out, um, which I'm really excited about. Because check out the video and please let me know what you think. I would love to hear your feedback and insights. From Norman L. It's about pentatonic usage. Norman asks, how do you know which pentatonic box to use? I understand where and how they link and are placed, but how do you know which box to use? Is it a tonal choice or is there theory behind it? Thanks. So what Norman's talking about is basically there's five box shapes for the pentatonic scale, five note scale, and that gives you, you know, the whole neck. And he's asking, well, how do you know which one to use? And the answer is simply, there are no rules, Norman. A lot of it comes down to what sounds best to your ears. And it comes down to tonal, uh, a tonal answer, like what sounds best, because obviously you maybe want to have a little bit more, you know, higher sounding scale with higher register notes you'd be playing the scale more down here lower up or uh, higher on the neck as opposed to lower or it might come down to a choice let's say if you're putting in some licks in between some chords maybe you won't have enough musical time to get down to this position in the neck so you might want to stay down here where the chords are so the the bottom line answer to your question is is it it is up to you it is up to the preference of the guitar player which box you choose which notes to play it's one of the one of the many, many, many so awesome things about this amazing instrument is we have all these amazing choices to make. And oftentimes there aren't any rules. It's all up to the player preference. I have a YouTube question here from David Subba who asks, Sir, I want to download your ebook, but error has occurred. So what to do? A few people have asked me that question, like they're trying to get one of my ebooks um, by clicking on a link below a lesson here on YouTube and an error is coming up or maybe they've signed up on the email list already. Just remember that you can always contact me directly at the next level guitar at yahoo.com. Um, if there's a problem, if there's an error, you know, sometimes a link gets corrupted or sometimes a, a broken or something, you know, um, there's glitches, computers are glitchy, it happens, um, but you can always contact me directly. Just let me know which ebook do you want. Do you want my beginner ebook or do you want my rock blues ebook, my soloing ebook? Let me know which ebook and I can send it to you directly as a PDF. 
The easiest way is just to go to one of those videos below. Just about every video I have on YouTube, there's a link. And you click on that link, you enter your email address, and then we will send you a free ebook and a free lesson. But if you're having troubles or if you're getting an error message or something, just contact me and I will take care of you personally. Jim A from North Carolina asks, I have problems maintaining the correct rhythm with strumming patterns. Do you have any pointers to help with maintaining rhythm while strumming difficult patterns? Jim, it's kind of hard for me to assess exactly where the issue is with your strumming. Like, why are you getting hung up and how are you getting knocked off because of a technique thing or is it because of rhythmic and timing thing? It's really hard to say. Um, so I'll make a few general points and point you toward a lesson of mine and then we could take it from there. And then going forward, email me and we could dial in the problem. If you have a complex strum pattern and you're looking at it in terms of downs and ups, right? Written out, break that pattern out, break it down from one long series into multiple parts. For instance, let's take this pattern. If I write that whole thing out, that pattern is down, up, down, up, down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, right? And that's a mouthful at first. So maybe just to get a hang of it, take it and break it up. Down, up, down, up, down. That's the first part. Down, up, down, up, down. Down, up, down, up, down. Down, up, down, up, down. Get that. Then the next part would be down, up, 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 down. Down, up, 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 down. Down, up, 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 down. You put those two together. Down, up, down, up, down. Helps you more play a chord like E minor. Down, up, down, up, down, down, up, 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 down. Rest. Down, up, down, up, down, down, up, 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 down. And then the last part of the third part is just the down, up. Straight eighth note, one end, one end. So, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, 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 down, down, up, down. to the point where you're not thinking about in strumming and rhythm in terms of upstrokes and downstrokes. You want to be more free wheeling, kind of just scratching out the rhythm. I'm not thinking upstrokes and downstrokes, right? I'm just kind of catching a rhythm and going with it, changing it up, but it's all in time. That's where you want to get to the point. That's where I kind of how I teach strumming and rhythm. Of course, we all start off teaching students, beginner students, with upstrokes and downstrokes and learning easy strum patterns. Down, down, up, up, down, up, right? Up, down, up. We probably all played that one, right? Down, down, up, up, down, up, right? Um, and then we move to more complex ones. And then what I start to do is I start to wean students off of strum patterns and start playing more by ear rhythmically. And I've seen time and time again, students are able to make that jump if they have enough training and they feel they're to the point, if they're to the point where they can start picking it off by feel and by ear. So maybe if you're looking at strum patterns and that's what's throwing you off, I would say start trying to pick them off, the rhythms off by ear. If it's a technique thing, I'll tell you what, check out that link below uh, to a long lesson on strumming and rhythm and strum patterns. Um, later on in the lesson, it gets into some more complex strum patterns. Try that. It might be too rudimentary for you, I'm not sure. A lot of it too is repetition, you know. When we're learning a strum pattern at first, you're not gonna maybe play it, you know, right off the bat perfectly every time. You might play it right a couple times, fall off the horse, you get back on, do it again. Then the next time you'll play the pattern maybe two or three more measures properly and then fall off the horse. This is what I see with my students all the time and you have to keep doing it again and again. What helps sometimes is play with another person who knows the pattern and try to play along with them, right? Play together. That's what I do for my students as an exercise. And they'll fall off after a while, they get back on, they'll do it a little bit longer. Fall off, get back on, do it a little bit longer. So playing with someone else who has a little bit more command of the pattern and matching them is a good exercise as well. Got a question here from Big Al from Stoke-on-Trent in the UK. What's up, Big Al? Greetings from across the pond. He wants to know, hey David, my question is this, the three pickups on the guitar, which is best one to use and what do each one do? 
What is the best position for the lever as the different positions? Thank you, Alan. There isn't necessarily a best position. It's a matter of what sounds best for your ears. It all comes down to the sound and the sounds that you like best. Again, that's one of the greatest things about this guitar is all these awesome choices and all these versatile, cool instruments that we can get all these different tones and sounds from. So one's not better than the other, it's just different. But here's how it works. Standard, you know, three single coil uh, gu guitar, Fender, this is a Fender Stratocaster, all the way up, switch tip all the way up. That's usually called position five, right? So we're all the way up toward the front uh, neck of the guitar all the way back that's usually position one and I'll also put a diagram up here off the Fender website so you can see it graphically all the way up position five that is just the neck pickup okay this one here second position four right is your neck and middle pickups both of these position three just the middle pickup position two is the middle and the back pickup okay or your uh, bass pickup, as some people call it, or bridge pickup. Position one is just this pickup, just the bridge or back or bass pickup. Okay, and all of these are gonna give you different tones that you want to experiment with, right? Just a couple examples. Um, all the way up, I'm all the way up in our neck position here, and I'll just play a lick. Now, listen to it now as I add the middle pickup, neck and middle, position four. Right? Here's just the middle pickup. Adds a little bit more trebly sound. Here's the middle and the back. And here's just the back bridge pickup. So as you can see, they all have their own tonal character and they all sound a little different, which is awesome because they give us these awesome choices. Uh, a lot of what I like to do is a lot of my lead guitar work I like doing on the neck pickup and a lot of my rhythm work uh, when it's more distorted or heavily distorted, um, I like using a humbucker, you know, basically two single coils wired together. This guitar doesn't have one, but my other guitars, I'll use that, um, use the back pickup. Um, and then sometimes for lead, I'll switch between the, the back pickup and the neck pickup, right? Mixing them together. For clean rhythmic sounds, I like the neck pickup. Or the neck and middle. Especially on a Strat, because you get that real chimey kind of bell-like sounds. If I was playing a guitar with two humbuckers, just to show you, like this Les Paul, for instance, most two humbucker guitars like this, down, having the switch tip down, that's the back pickup, right? Your bridge pickup or uh, bass pickup. The middle is both pickups. Up is your neck pickup, okay? And in a guitar like this, you have a separate volume and tone control here for each pickup, which is nice. So you could blend, you know, maybe less volume on this pickup for your rhythm. You can make more volume back here for your lead. You could do a lot with the volume and tone for each pickup. Um, that's a nice feature on these type guitars. This sound very different than the Strat. Here's both. That was the back pickup. Here's both. And here's the neck pickup. Now these pickups a little bit more high output then the strap different sounds different guitars different pickups they all give you these awesome options find out which you like best it's all about the sounds what sounds best to your ears if you'd like a free video lesson and a coinciding ebook the ebook is a killer reference tool i diagram out like 29 scales in all different positions uh, i talk about things like soloing strategies modal playing pentatonics and so much more uh, major minor key soloing uh, the ebook is packed with lessons and diagrams and it comes with um, a video lesson on how to spice up your soloing and add some pop just click below i'll send them to you for free from next level guitar the next question is from satanic shed love these names people come up with this one he probably meant satanic shred but it came out shed or maybe i deleted the r i don't know but it was probably shred but anyway he asks or she asks hello dave i really love your learning 
platform. I am a beginner guitar player, but interested mainly in playing black metal. I want to know what should I learn to be a good black metal player? And also if you have courses for black metal techniques, such as tremolo picking, harmonics and such. Thank you. That is a really aggressive kind of style of guitar. And yeah, you should study certain techniques so you can play those techniques and devices in that genre. And some of the things that you probably are going to want to study is like you mentioned, tremolo picking. That's very, very big in that genre. Tremolo picking, basically fast alternate picking, right? So you really want to get good at alternate picking. You also want to study things like palm muting, natural harmonics, um, sweep arpeggios, alternate tunings, because you're probably going to be tuning down. You also want to study things like power chords, right? And then good guitar techniques like hammer-ons and pull-offs. And because the music in that genre is usually very dark, you also want to study things like uh, minor key, you know, minor key progressions and minor key chords. And that will really help you to start putting progressions together and riff building in that genre. So those are all good things to study. I don't have a specific course on black metal. Um, the closest thing I have that will help you with these techniques is I do have a course on shred guitar. And I'll put a link to that course in the YouTube description box. So you can click on that and check it out. And in that course, we go over things like fast alternate picking and hybrid picking and palm muting. We also go over things like uh, sweep arpeggios and diminished scales and dimin use of the diminished and stuff. So all things that will help you in that genre. Um, so you, you could check that out. If you click on that link, we have a um, video preview you could watch and you could read all about it and let me know if you have any other questions. I got a question here from Richard L. from Brooklyn, New York, East Coast. What's up, Richard? My question is, if I play a song at a different place on the neck and placing the root note in a different place, inversion, will the song sound the same or just similar? If I spell a C chord, C E G or G C E or E G C, would it matter? And you're talking about chord inversions, right? You're talking about playing the same chord, right? Like for instance, you listed a C chord out in different places. Is it going to sound exactly the same? No, because in different places, the strings might be thicker or thinner on certain notes depending on where along the neck you're playing it. So it's going to have a different timbre. It'll have the same resonance or that same, you know, theme or feeling, but it may not sound exactly like it. And that's okay. You don't necessarily, don't necessarily have to shoot for exactly unless you want to. With inversions, we're just talking about different ways of playing the same chord. That's such an amazing thing about this awesome instrument is there's so many different ways, so many different voicings, so many different inversions where you could play basically the same chord, right? We have all these awesome choices. For instance, let's just take an E minor chord as an example, right? Many of you probably know an E minor chord in open position. Those notes in an E minor chord, root, flat, third, and fifth, the lowest note in that chord is E, right? Like in most cases, most of the time, probably most of the chords you're playing, the lowest note is the root note, right? So if I play that, you know, you could play an E minor here, root, and that's called root position, right? Where the lowest note is the root note. You could play that E minor root position up here. But what if you start playing that E minor in other positions or inversions like here? or here, or here. All sounds like an E minor chord, but all a little bit different, right? Inversions, just different ways of playing the same chord. So technically what an inversion is, is when the root note is no longer the lowest note in the chord. For instance, I played this E minor chord or E minor triad. Again, remember those notes, right? E, right here on the B string. Now the G string is my B note. That's the lowest note. That's the fifth. And there's my G. And that chord is usually is still an E minor chord, but that's usually called like your second inversion, where the fifth, or in this instance, the B, is the lowest note in the chord. Now if I put the third or the, the flat third, flat third because it's minor, I put the G as the lowest note now, that's first inversion. Right? And again, G note, B note, my E is now the highest note in the chord. Still an E minor chord. Or I could play it here, but again, here I'm back to the E being the lowest note in the chord. E, G, B. So they're all going to give me that same color of that E minor chord, but they'll have that different timbre. And, you know, that's very desirable because 
I might physically need to be up higher on the neck because I'm doing something else and I need to grab it up here, or I might want it to sound lower with that root as the low note in the chord, right? Got a question here from John C. in the UK. Hey, John C., greetings from across the pond. John wants to know, David, since you kindly ask, here are a couple questions regarding pedals. Awesome. I love pedal questions. Uh, one, is there any serious alternative to the Strymon timeline when it comes to digital delay pedals, or is it simply a must-have? And then two, he asks a long question about octave fuzz pedals and combination pedals, and then he had some other thoughts about it. I'll list the question out. You could read it. And he says, any thoughts regards John? So let's first talk about the Strymon timeline. It's an awesome, awesome delay pedal but it does so much more. Strymon is making some absolutely killer groundbreaking effects and they're really catching fire across the guitar community. Now that is an awesome excellent pedal. Is it as you say a must-have? I don't think it's a must-have. I think it depends upon what you want to use the delay for. Now here's the thing with the Strymon pedal. First of all it's expensive. Uh, it's like 450 bucks brand new but it's packed. It does a lot of stuff. And like with most pedals at that level, if you're really not going to use most of the stuff that it has in it, then it's kind of a waste, right? But if you think you're going to use all of it, then by all means, it's awesome. And what I mean by that is it, it, it's a pedal that kind of incorporates 12 delay machines. So it has, you know, 12 different types of delay settings, and then you can control the parameters of all of that you could store 200 presets and save your favorite settings, right? It's MIDI compatible. It has a stereo looper, you know, and, and like I said, you could save and recall all these patches. So, I mean, the pedal does an incredible amount of things. And if you think those are things that you would like to incorporate into your playing or mess around with and you think you'd get use out of them, then by all means, um, it's a great pedal. But if you're just looking for a more simple delay pedal um, or you may not use all that, then I would recommend just getting your basic, you know, delay pedal. And there's a couple different types. There's digital delays, there's analog delays. Personally, I like analog delay. Um, I just think for me, it sounds a little bit warmer. And I'm not saying better, because I like the sound of digital delay too. It's just a different sound. They're just different, not necessarily one better than the other. I like analog delay. And I like, on my pedal board, I'll tell you the delay I have is the MXR carbon copy. I've been using that delay a long time. And for me, you know, I just want a simple delay. And as far as a simple delay, that MXR Carbon Copy does a fantastic job. You know, all I need is just three basic parameter effects, you know, controls, three basic controls. You know, repeats, how much, how many times you want, or feedback, how many times you want the delay to repeat. You know, time, the length of the delay, and rate or um, mix. You know, how much dry signal versus how much delay you want mixed together. Those three things are, you know, plenty for me as far as how I use the delay pedal. Um, and so a more simple delay like that works better for me. Something else I would use if it was on there is something like a tap tempo button. I, I would use that a lot because then you could tap that button to tap in the actual tempo of the song you're playing and get the delay right in time, you know, every time if you're playing live or whatnot, or if you just want to set it really quick. Um, so the tap tempo button is nice, but you know, so a lot comes down to what do you want out of the pedal? What, what are you going to use, you know, and, um, uh, obviously budget and am I really going to use all the features that this pedal offers? And as far as the, the second part of your question, you know, definitely that's awesome that you're experimenting with different sounds and you want to experiment placing effects in different places, in front of certain other effects, behind other effects, you know, in the effects loop versus in the right into the front of the amp. Um, I have found, like you were saying, you were having some difficulty with a pedal that combined octave and fuzz, and you know, can one be on, can one be off? If it's on, it's too much versus if it's off. So I have found like when you have combination effects like that, it's oftentimes better just to get two separate pedals. You know, one pedal for, especially something like that, one pedal for fuzz, because you really want to be able to control the parameters of fuzz as far as how much of the fuzz you want. Again, the mix, you know, and then one pedal for octave. So I suggest separate pedals when you're up against a challenge like that. Sometimes you can get a combination pedal and it works okay. I do have a course if you're interested on the ultimate guide to effects. And in that course, I talk all about signal path. I talk all about, you know, 
where in the chain, how you might want to set up your pedals. I demonstrate certain pedals before the others. We talk a lot about tone, a lot about gear, demonstrating different effects. If you want to check that out, it's a really cool course, digital course. I'll put a link to that also in the YouTube description box below. So check it out. Let me know if you have any questions. And also let me know what you decide on when you make your purchase of your effect pedals. We'd love to hear. I love talking effects and effects pedals. So let me know, John. Take care. Time to give away some Next Level Guitar swag, possibly a Next Level Guitar t-shirt or a DVD course or digital download course. We're going to choose a random winner from the questions today. And the winner of today's FAQ session is Richard L. from Brooklyn, New York. Richard asked that question about inversions and chord inversions from Brooklyn. All right, Richard, stay tuned. I'll send you an email. Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you so much for your awesome questions. I love doing these. If you get a chance, please, it would really help me out if you could listen to uh, the first single from my coming record from my band, my original band, Mind Cell. I'll put a link to that on YouTube in the description box. I'll also put a link to our Facebook page down there. Uh, if you could check that out and like and follow it and share my music with others who you think might like it, I would so appreciate it as well as email or let me know your feedback. I would love to hear your feedback on the song and I'm going to be releasing some more clips from the coming record and then we're going to be releasing the record. I'm so excited about it. And uh, remember, subscribe to the channel. That really helps us to keep these videos content coming. And uh, if you like the video, please give it a like, click the thumbs up, leave a comment below and uh, get your questions in, email them to me or leave a question below uh, in the YouTube comment box because, you know, you'll see them on and then the next edition of FAQ for Next Level Guitar, right? I'm David Taub, co-creator of Next Level Guitar. Thank you so much for your support over all these years. I'm going to keep bringing the content, the lessons, I'm going to keep answering your questions, the gear reviews. I so appreciate you tuning in. Um, I hope you enjoy these. Let me know your feedback on my music. And remember, your guitar playing is an evolution. Take care and rock on.